Now most of us put all the blame on global warming whenever it comes to climate change. But there are many things more which are making those cyclones, famine, which are responsible for those heat waves, those cold waves. So science is important. But other than science, geography has gained enough importance in today's time because we need to understand exactly what is wrong with this world, exactly what is wrong with our climate. So let's start with the geography series. So we'll be starting with physical geography series. We will go deeper and deeper. We know about the atmosphere. So, so let's now understand exactly what happened to the solar radiation which is thrown towards the earth. Now three things happen to the solar radiation. First is scattering. What is scattering? The process of scattering occurs when small particles or gas molecules diffuse part of incoming solar radiation in random direction. Means they absorb the solar radiation, they start vibrating and, and release the wave in every direction. So they are actually scattering the wave. So it is called scattering. Now only few portion of this scattered energy actually reaches the earth. What is absorption? In this process, we know that molecules or particles absorb radiation. But here, after absorbing radiation, they release the energy. So they first absorb, then release the energy. But most of this released energy goes back to space. And the third thing happened, which is reflection. As the name implies, Molecules in atmosphere reflect solar energy, that is solar radiation. Clouds reflect solar energy. Only 51% of the solar radiation reaches the earth. So what happened to rest of it? Around 20% get reflected by the cloud and 6% get reflected by the atmosphere. Around 4% is reflected from the surface. When this solar radiation falls on snow or glaciers, they reflect back. So around 4% of the solar radiation reflect back from the surface. We lose around the 30% of the solar radiation in these three processes. Now, reflectivity of the surface is often described as albedo. Now, Earth's average albedo reflects from both surface and the atmosphere is about 30%, 20% by cloud, 6% by other elements of the atmosphere and 4% is the surface. So 30% albedo, 30% reflectivity. Now 19% of the solar radiation get absorbed by the atmosphere. Now let's come to greenhouse effect. We just came to know that 51% of the solar radiation actually reaches the surface. Surface absorbs it and surface also radiates back. Now surface absorbs the short wavelength solar radiation but it radiates back as long wavelength radiation. Greenhouse gases absorb long wavelength. After absorbing radiation they release the energy. So they first absorb then release the energy. So what they do is they release back those long wavelength to surface. Every time surface absorbs some heat, it radiates back the 90% of it as long wavelength. This keeps happening and happening and the heat remains trapped in our atmosphere for a long time. Accumulation of this heat over time can actually increase the temperature of earth. But as you know that temperature hasn't increased by 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Celsius. That didn't happen. It increased by 4 degrees Celsius. Hold your horses. The explanation is not over. We may need to go deeper but later. So exactly what happened? If we look at this figure, we can see surface absorb short wavelength and release long wavelength. And near the equator in the tropical region, there is lots of solar radiation available. So, so surface absorbs a lot. It doesn't radiate back everything. So we get a net increase in energy. 
but as we move towards the pole, the solar radiation decreases. The surface absorbs less heat, but it radiates almost all of it. It also loses some extra energy because of longer nights. We get a deficit because difference of incoming and outgoing energy is negative. So we get a deficit. We get a deficit at higher latitude and we have a surplus near the equator. So this difference of energy level actually creates the wind. This difference of energy is very important. It gives us the weather. Let's summarize what happened to the solar radiation in short, very short. If Q is the energy that somehow reaches the surface, that is the 50% of the solar energy, we can divide it into three parts. One, the sensible heat. Two, the latent heat. And three, the surface heat flux into soil and water. Sensible heat, it is part of the heat that we can feel. So, if you are standing on ground, bare feet, and you are feeling the heat, the ground is hot. Then, you are actually feeling the sensible heat. And the latent heat. We know when when liquid turn into solid, it releases latent heat. And for solid to turn into liquid, it needs latent heat. So latent heat, latent heat flux moves energy globally when solid, liquid, and gas interchanges form. And the third is surface heat flux into soil and water. As we saw, the 10% deficit every time, as the specific heat of the water is very high, it also absorbs a lot of heat. What happened to this heat is they get transferred. Inland, they get transferred to conduction process deeper and deeper. And in water, they get transferred through convection process. And in water, this absorption of our heat is more near the equator region and less in the higher latitude. So we get a temperature gradient, difference of temperature. And because of this difference of temperature, we get ocean current. So that's all for now. 